Are we about ready to roll? Is it 2.30 officially? It's 2.30. Let's do it. Everybody looks excited. Okay. Is there anyone here actually, here actually excited to be here to learn about SSL? Yeah. yeah. Some people. Woo! How many people here are frustrated with SSL? And that's why you're here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Dude, the excitement is palpable. In here. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. great. Um, I'm, I'm Bill Major. Um, I'm actually with the uh, ArcGIS Enterprise development team. I'm actually based in DC. This is Craig Cleveland. Uh, he's, he was in the DC, now works, uh, he's uh, actually from New York now. So um, we're here to talk about SSL. We've spent a number of years working with customers in a variety of environments. And uh, this is just, as you know, an uh, important topic um, to, get, uh, to go over today. So these are the, the sort of the focus areas that we're going to fo uh, go over. Um, the description for this, I think, was pretty good. Hopefully, you know what you're getting into today. But basically, we're going to talk about some fundamentals. I'm not sure what you know, depth of knowledge we have here. I'm sure from just very general to people that maybe even understand cipher suites and things. But we're going to go over some uh, fundamentals first. We're then going to talk about SSL at the web tier, at your web server tier. Um, then we're going to jump down into uh, dealing with SSL with an ArcGIS Enterprise portal server data store. And then we're actually going to go over a few little uh, sample demos where um, there's an SSL problem and then how you fix it. Um, so it's going to be a pretty jam-packed hour. Hopefully everything goes well. Um, we have a lot of content. I would say that that's just do questions at the end. Um, we'll try to make sure we uh, leave some time to discuss. All right, fundamentals. <clears throat> All right, so first thing is uh, we use the term SSL a lot these days, right? Secure socket layer. But really the, uh, the spec for SSL, the protocol, for the most part is no longer really viewed as the, one of the protocols you should use anymore. Uh, TLS is an is a evolution or a supersede of the SSL. You know, there used to be SSL version 2, version 3, then there's TLS 1, 1.1, 1 1.2. Uh, most everyone these days is implementing version 1.2 as the most secure and um, you know, may not even support some of the older SSL specs. We still say SSL, it's just a very common phrase, um, but I just want to make sure that you know, those versions are, are older versions at this point. One of the things we're going to talk about is, and I'll go over in a little bit more detail, is uh, um, what certificate authorities are. I think it's important to understand how SSL gets implemented with this concept of certificate authorities signing certificates and you putting those certificates in place. Um, typically, those are done for um, servers, for your web servers. But in some environments where um, I'm not sure if anyone's here is familiar with user PKI certificates, anyone know what I'm talking about? Cat cards, anything like that? OK, I'm just a handful of you. You can also have client certificates, meaning they represent your identity. So there are some users that also have certificates issued for those purposes. Um, this is interesting here. Um, if you're ever like, kind of curious about a website, um, whether it has a good SSL uh, certificate or not, I won't click on it here, but there's a link in these slides that you can go back to later on. You uh, click on that site, you can type in like www.esri.com. It then interrogates the certificate, tells you information about it. Make sure it tells you if it's properly signed. It's just a kind of a nice link uh, for determining, um, you know, certificates out there on the open internet. And of course, everything is about private public key pairing. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Um, and then finally, um, all these things are really great. But at the end of the day, then we have to start to make adjustments within ArcGIS Enterprise. Um, so that is particularly in secure or closed environments, um, getting these things in place so we have really trusted, secure communication. All right, so let's go over a few little basics. Um, so there is always a certificate authority out there. Everyone know what a certificate authority is? GoDaddy, DigiCert, things like that. Like if you want a certificate for your web server on the open internet, you go buy one from somewhere. That is a certificate authority. If you're on a disconnected network, or maybe your own LAN, internal LAN or something, you may have your own internal certificate authority set up that are publishing certificates for your internal. Um, but there always starts with a certificate authority that's trusted, that's known. So you go to the certificate authority, and the certificate authority issues certificates. They sign a SSL certificate 
that you put on your web server so you can do HTTPS. Um, you also get certificates in client devices, like you know, in your web browser, they get loaded there as well. Okay, so certificates are issued by certificate authorities. Okay, there are times also when there may be what we call intermediate certificates, all right? Um, and I'm just going over this because you may see some of these things in the future. So like uh, DigiCert, uh, um, is it DigiCert? Yeah, DigiCert. DigiCert is a root. There's also a DigiCert intermediate. So if you ever get a certificate from DigiCert, there's actually going to be an intermediate certificate root in there. So uh, sometimes the intermediate certificate authorities are the ones that actually sign certificates. So you now get into this, sorry about that, this tr trusted chain. Um, I guess I should have turned off <laughs> Slack. I forgot to do that. Um, of certificates. So there's the root, the intermediate, and then the intermediate um, then issues out certificates for either your, your clients or your servers. I know this is a little dry, but I think it's just important to understand how some of these things work. All right, so let's talk about, all right, so you have certificates, but how does secure communication actually occur? So let's say I have a web server over on the left. It has a signed certificate in it. And then over on the right is like us sitting at our desk, you know, at our workstations and a web browser. Okay, so the way it works is a, C, a CA signs a server certificate. It's put on the web browser. I have that same CA loaded into my web browser as a trusted certificate authority. So what happens is when I go to hit that web server, basically your client says, hey, I want to talk to you over HTTPS. The server says, that's cool. Here's my certificate if you want to use it. And that certificate sort of is what we call kind of a public key. It's basically saying, here's my certificate, and if you trust it, here is a public key that you will use to encrypt your traffic back to me. Now, the client gets this certificate back and says, oh, do I trust this or not? And the way it works is if I have the same root in my web browser that signed that server certificate, and I trust it, then you know, the HTTPS session begins. So as the client then starts to send traffic back to the web server over HTTPS, it's actually encrypting it with the public key from that server. The server then is receiving that traffic and it is actually decrypting it with a private key. So this is where the public and private key kind of come into play. If you ever do a little bit of research on SSL, this is sort of the basics of uh, PKI. So it's public key is used to encrypt traffic and only the private key can decrypt that traffic. So that's basically how trust is set up and uh, secure communication occurs. All right, there's some other things to be aware of. There are times when certificates get revoked by a certificate authority. Maybe someone calls in to DigiCert and say, hey, my certificate has been compromised Someone got my private key, and I'm afraid someone may sp be spoofing it or using it for some other reason. Can you revoke it? All right, so all certificate authorities also issue um, uh, certificate revocation lists, CRLs. So anytime a certificate is revoked, the certificate also knows that when you try to use it, it's going to go check it against the CRL. And if it has been revoked, then you may see web browsers um, you probably don't run across this particular issue very often, but I just want to throw it out there that, that, that this is a practice as well. You may see this you know, on occasion. It will sp specifically tell you that, hey, this cer server certificate has been revoked. You know, proceed, you know, proceed at, you know, you, you know, at, at your own risk. All right, so where do we see these trust stores, like on your client browser and your system? Well, there's two places. If you're familiar with the uh, uh, certificates within the management console within Windows, you can go here and see all the certificates that your system trusts. By default, when you install Microsoft Windows, there's going to be a bunch of stuff that it trusts with it. You can add more to that if you desire. So it's in the, the certificate uh, management console. Um, also, uh, Craig and I get, you know, we banter back and forth about this. I'm a Windows guy. I don't know why anybody would use a Mac. but <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. 
So on the Mac, this is some location for you Mac users, if this makes any sense to you. There's also a trust store for those certificates as well. Most people in here are Mac users, right? No? OK. That's good. Um, OK, so it's important to note also that um, you may say, well, you know, how does my web browser trust uh, certificates? Internet Explorer and Chrome both use the Windows Trust Store. Okay, that's important to note. Um, Firefox, on the other hand, and I guess uh, for Mac users, uh, it's Chrome only, since I guess there's, there's not no IE, IE on exactly. Windows. It's very important to note that if you have Firefox, Firefox has its own certificate store. It does not use the Windows certificate uh, <clears throat> store. So you, anytime you import certificates into IE, but you're both, maybe you use IE and Firefox at the same time, you also need to do the same thing in Firefox if you want a, a seamless experience. So just be aware of that about Firefox. All right, so quick demo. Um, I talked about these things. I, Craig's gonna take a moment and just show it to you live, just so, uh, you know, just as a visual to make sure you navigate things right. Cool, all right, thanks. So Bill helped us kind of lay the foundation there for you know, the, the notion of trust chains, certificate authorities, and I just want to show you where these things are on you know, an everyday Windows machine to kind of get you thinking about if you're ever having to troubleshoot uh, SSL-related problems on the client side, you sort of understand where you, you might go to, kind of, to, to look for these types of problems. So I'm going to go to the certificate manager, so we can... Uh, just go to our start menu and type cert MGR, and that will launch the, uh, the Microsoft Management Console with the Certificate Manager snap-in already added. So what we're looking at here is we can come to the folder that says the Trusted Root Certification Authorities and see the certificates. These are root certificates from certificate authorities that my machine trusts. So this is on the operating system level. These are all the root certificates that we trust. So we can see, you know, well, there's a lot of, of you know, well-known sort of industry level certs here, DigiCert, um, you know, GoDaddy, as Bill mentioned. But then you can see things that we have internally, like at Esri, we have our own certificate authority that we use for internal testing and assign internal sites and things like that. And then there's also a folder here for the intermediate certificate authorities which Bill mentioned here, so we have other things in here as well um, that, that we can take a look at and, and see that those are there to establish full trust chains. So that's on my machine. So here locally, what my machine trusts, and then as Bill told us in the slides, what is that important to note as we start talking about ArcGIS Enterprise and, and WebGIS? From a browser perspective, it's this trust door that IE and Chrome utilize. So you, anytime you have any SSL uh, uh, configurations you need to make to, to establish trust chains on your machine for Chrome and IE, that happens here. You add those certificates here. Firefox, on the other hand, has its own trust store, which is managed internally. So if we just come here, browse over to our options, and then privacy and security, and I scroll down a bit, We'll see down here at the bottom, we can view certificates. And so here's uh, my authorities. So this is sort of the equivalent of the, the trusted root authorities that are there um, on, the, on the window side. And you'll see as I just kind of scroll quickly through here, this is a completely different list. So this is another trust store. So a lot of times as people are, are working within ArcGIS Enterprise, things are doing okay in Chrome, but they're having problems in Firefox. And this is sort of the, can be one of the root causes of that, is they don't have their trust chains established here within Firefox. Okay. So again, not the, uh, the, the most riveting sort of topic, but getting these fundamentals in place about trust stores, certificate authorities, trust chains, and where those are managed are really sort of imperative as we start to get into the, some more specifics. Is that good for everybody? Any questions on any of that stuff? Does anything not add up? Yeah, please. Yeah. So in, within Esri, we, we have our own certificate authority, so that's right here in Firefox. So that's something that our, our IST manages, and we can go ahead and grab that, that root certificate 
and import it here into Firefox. And if we have you know, other development machines, things like that, we would import that. So that's much the same process that you might use in your own organization if you had a CA there or on closed networks, things of that nature. It's typically something that's um, enabled on your like primary domain controller that, that controls your network. Yeah. Okay, cool, yeah, in the back. How does Safari, to the best of my knowledge, it uses keychain access, but I haven't really done a whole lot with Safari and uh, it's trust stores. Can anybody verify that? I'm getting a lot of head names. Yeah. So it's using the, the keychain access that Bill showed there. Yep. Yep. All right, cool. We're gonna we're gonna jump jump to the next topic here. And so we got some of the, the fundamental pieces in place, and now we're gonna talk about how do we implement this at the web tier? So as we're talking about ArcGIS Enterprise, um, you know, it's obviously web-based, so we need to, to implement SSL uh, at the web tier. So what I'm gonna uh, talk about here is I'm gonna focus on sort of an IIS example as a web server, and then Bill's gonna show you an example using Tomcat, so we'll hit a couple of, of, of different web servers here. Um, but the idea, the thing I want you guys to take out of this is that that these steps at a high level are going to be similar regardless of what web server you use. So if you sort of get some of these fundamental pieces down, it'll make sense to you regardless of where you implement this. So the notion here is that you know, some organizations uh, that we deal with, they, they completely uh, uh, mandate no HTTP at all, or any HTTPS traffic is gonna have to be done using a properly signed server certificate, right? So no uh, uh, self-signed. Um, and then by default, right, as we talk about web servers, they, they only come with HTTP enabled, so we need to be able to enable HTTPS uh, on this. So how do we do that, right? Well, we've got to do that. We've got to get a CA sign certificate and then configure our web server to, to utilize it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we, we go through this process that's called creating a certificate signing request, or a CSR, all right? And, and this screenshot here, what I've got is I'm creating the CSR within IIS. Um, but again, the idea is you could create this in many different ways. Um, like I said, Bill's going to, he's going to show an example using key tool. You could use OpenSSL. Um, as we talk about ArcGIS Enterprise, there are actually ways to do this within the portal admin and the ArcGIS server admin endpoints for use there. So there are many ways to create a CSR. I just want you all thinking about, hey, this is the first step in the process. Um, just a note here that a lot of users who are new to this get tripped up quite a bit uh, as they're putting in the particular parameters for their CSR. The common name property, that's the URL by which users are going to hit your web server. All right, So that's, that's what they're looking for under that common name property. The rest of it's pretty straightforward about your organization, what group you're with, and then where you are. So once we have a CSR, the next thing we need to do is present this to that certificate authority. As Bill said, the certificate authorities are what establish trust, so we need to take this and present it to our, our CA here. And then depending on where you're, you're uh, getting your certificate uh, from, that might be a local internal CA, that could be Digicert, that could be any number of places. So in these screenshot examples, I'm using our internal uh, certificate authority. So this will be pretty similar for anybody who might be operating in a, in a Windows environment. You'll, you'll probably recognize some of these screenshots. So what I've done is I created my CSR. I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna go ahead and, and choose the option. In this case, this is uh, submitting a, a request by using the base 64 encoded option. I then will just paste in the, the base 64 encoded information there. Uh, into the request. And now the thing I really want to note for you all right now, one of the things you need to be sure uh, is when you're um, submitting this request nowadays is you want to put a subject alternative name in there or a SAN. This is, um, uh, uh, this is a big deal nowadays in the last what, year or so, give or take. Chrome has enforced the need for a SAN in your server certificates. Otherwise, it'll throw you an error. Um, it's, it's also used a lot in a case where people might have multiple ways in which they'll access a web server. So in my example here, we're using you know, C Cleveland 3. Well, if I wanted to access my web server over C Cleveland 4, C Cleveland 5, or C Cleveland, we could add to those subject alternative names, and then that would uh, uh, show us good SSL um, regardless of the URL which I used to hit that. 
Okay, so it's important to put that, that SAN in there nowadays. All right, so once we've done that, we just submit it, and we can go ahead and download our signed certificate at this point. So we're, we're ready, we've got our certificate. And then the next piece here is we need to install and configure that signed cert against our, our web server. Right? And, it, and this is where that varies. The process varies a little bit depending on what your web server is. But again, those high level steps, getting a CSR, presenting it to your CA, downloading it, and then installing and configuring it is gonna be the same regardless of your web server. So in my case, I'm back here in IIS. I am passing to it my signed certificate. And then I'm binding the traffic to 443. Right? So now I'm saying, hey, use this signed certificate when any, anytime anybody hits my web server over HTTPS. And then if I've done that all correctly, you'll see there I get that nice green lock in the upper left-hand corner and not the, you know, hey, HTTPS is not enabled by default. All right, so that's a, that's a quick crash course in what it's like. But again, that's, it's pretty simple. It's a lot of it is just sort of demystifying the process there. Um, and then to drive it home with, a, with an example here, I'm gonna pass it over to Bill, and he's gonna show you guys how to do this with, uh, with KeyTool and with Tomcat, so you get another look at, at that process. Thank you, Craig. Now this is probably a little way down in the weeds, but you know, I just thought it would be useful. I know there's probably not a lot of Linux users out there, but the process that Craig just went through using you know, uh, IIS manager, there, you know, there's other ways of doing it for other operating systems as well. So you can see here I have a web server, it's Tomcat, I'm hitting it over HTTP only right now. And by default, if I try to go to HTTPS, um, it's actually not enabled. Most web browsers don't enable HTTPS by default because they don't know what kind of certificate you know, to use on installation. They don't want to assume self-signed or, or something else, okay? So what I'm gonna do is quickly show you, uh, I'm just gonna copy some commands in here. Anybody familiar with key tool? Ooh, look at that, oh, that's I good. Right. I like it. Giddy up. All right, I'm just gonna, I've kind of pre-staged this, but I'm just gonna talk about some of these commands real quick. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new private key. I'm not gonna go over a lot of details here, but the important thing to remember here is that your CN, your common name, needs to be the URL by which users are going to hit your web server. If they're gonna be using a DNS, or you have a web server out right, in the proxy or, or something like that, it needs to be that URL. It does not always necessarily have to be the machine name. It needs to be the URL by which customers or your end users are hitting the app because it does name, um, name matching is the way these certificates work. First thing I do is create a private key. Then I create the certificate request. Um, that certificate signing request. So again, not to really go over in the details of um, super secret password, but basically I end up with uh, this thing called a CSR. And if you've done anything like this, um, then you know it looks very similar to that. Begin certificate request and it's just you know uh, a PEM encoded file. So then I'm gonna take this CSR and go get it signed. I'm not gonna show that here and then you get a response back. You get a signed certificate back that then you would import into the same key store. So I'm not gonna go through these steps here because I've already staged it. But once I have a key store. I just wanna say, well, I wanna interject with one thing. So Bill did one additional step to what I talked to you about. I said CSR, present to the CSA, or the CA, download and install and configure. Bill created a private key. In IAS, that private key gets created during the CSR process. It just happens underneath the hood. Yeah. So if you're like, hey, why did Bill do one more thing than Craig did? That's all that's happened there. Right. So if you know anything about Tomcat, then you know that a server XML file is very important for it to start up. Right now, it's basically saying, hey, I only have port 80 running. So I actually have a, a pre-staged uh, XML here where in here, I also have enabled port 443 using my key store with my super secret password. So I'm just gonna real quick uh, copy that guy in place and overwrite my current server.xml. So basically the new file says, hey, here's 80, here's 443, use the certificate in that key store to enable HTTPS. Of course, I have to bounce Tomcat, do it again to start up. 
All right, so now, hopefully, if I come back here and refresh this page with HTTPS, ah, there we go. I have HTTPS, but more importantly, I got that little green lock. That means I'm good to go from my browser hitting that web server. All right, so just, just another workflow, different, different, uh, different web server in this case to do the same thing. So before Bill kicks it off, how about that? Everybody feel comfortable with that? You got the basics, you got the implementing at the web tier, everybody's still feeling pretty good? Yeah, question. question. Why did Chrome insist on a SAS? What was it? It's counterintuitive, right, to have to open up more URLs, or am I, where am I missing? Well, it, oh, go, no, go ahead, go ahead. It, it's actually interesting. Um, having a SAN in a certificate actually um, is part of the spec. It's just that browsers have never enforced it well. And with recent years and more security, Chrome has decided we're going to really abide by this spec and enforce it. And if you don't, we you get you know you get it sort of this untrusted kind of when you go to a site like that. It's just other, and I believe eventually other browsers will start to enforce it as well. Yep. One more. So the, question? The, the question is elaborating on what a key store is and what type of key stores that key tool works with. Yeah. Sure. So a key store is a Java side um, way of storing certificates. It's a Java, you know, it's what uses with Java tools. Um, key tool can actually not only work with a key store, which is a JKS format, a Java key store. It actually can also work with PKCS12, um, and I believe also PKCS7 files. Um, sometimes you may see those as PFX extensions or P7Bs, but um, I think I'm saying the right thing in that key tool can also work with other types of um, um, file formats as well. Okay. All right, anybody else? Will we move on? All right, cool. All right. In. So what have we done? So we've talked about the web server a little bit. Now let's take it a, a step down into ArcGIS Enterprise. So this is just a little graphic I've used for a long time. Let's say I had a, a fairly simple ArcGIS setup, right? Now, most people can install everything on one server. That's great. That's not necessarily a recommended production pattern. But let's just say I had a web server, a portal, an ArcGIS server. Um, you know, fairly simple. Um, one thing to remember is, um, go ahead, I'll do it is that within an environment like this, there are many SSL touch points, and probably why all of you are here. It's like, sometimes things work, other times they don't. Like, how do we, you know, what are the considerations? So like, there are several touch points, like a web browser talking to an external ArcGIS server. A web browser, my client talking to my, to my web server where I'm trying to access portal and, and server. You know, the web, if you have web tier authentication to like an LDAP over secure LDAP channels, you have to think about, well, how is my web server talking to that secure LDAP? How is Portal also talking to that secure LDAP, right? Um, because it's secure, like an LDAP S, Portal has to have certain trust in place to be able to talk to it. How is Portal talking to my ArcGIS server? You know, all of these are SSL considerations. You probably know these days that a lot of communication occurs over 6443, 7443 behind the scenes. Um, it's all SSL related. Um, and so you have to start to think about you know, how these things are going to communicate properly with each other. Working with um, external services, we'll hopefully get to an example to show this at the end. You know, Portal has to also trust external um, ArcGIS servers if you're going to be using them from other, other places as well. So there are many touch points that you have to kind of think about and keep in mind in, a, in even a simple, uh, simple deployment. Um, how many people have printing problems at times with SSL? Some people. So one other thing is a little bit more complicated. We specifically call it out here is that um, you know, a print service, you know, a lot of times uh, wh wherever your printing service is running on ArcGIS server, you got to make sure that that ArcGIS server also can trust any and everything that it's trying to access. Because at the end of the day, when you print something, it's that print GP service running over on that ArcGIS server that then has to 
talk back securely to everything. So you got to make sure that it has all the proper SSL um, trust in place um, to do that. Okay. So by default, most everyone knows here, some of these, you know, hopefully these ports seem a little bit familiar. Whenever I install portal or ArcGIS server, even data store out of the box, um, it actually creates what we call a self-signed certificate so that it can initially start its internal web server on 7443, 6443, 2443, 6143, is that GeoEvent? Yep. Is that right? Yep. 3344. That's Web App Builder Developer Edition. Um, you know, depending on your setup, you may want to, uh, you may have some SSL considerations as there. So by default, we, we Esri, we create self-signed certificates so that we can quickly get the software up and operational. A self-signed certificate simply means one that um, is issued by the system itself. So the, the common name and the issuer are both the same. That is a self-signed certificate and usually that's not a good, you know, it's not a good thing to have. Typically you want the issuer to be a, a trusted certificate authority. But you can um, create self-signed certificates as well. Self-signed certificates are typically untrustworthy and of course can be very easily compromised. You see self-signed certificates used a lot in development environments and that's fine, um, but it's definitely uh, considered a big no-no in a production environment, okay? And there are other things you may want to consider doing in a really secure environment, such as disabling any HTTP communication at all. So there are ways to do that. Okay, so the first thing that like we've kind of already gone over a little bit is, the first thing you want to do is implement proper SSL at your web tier. If I'm going to be accessing portal or ArcGIS server, I don't necessarily want to be talking directly to 6443 or 7443 from my clients, right? They're, they're not common ports. And um, you basically want to, you know, ab abstract that away and have everything going through a web server. So the first thing is always get your web server set up right, where your web adapters are, and then um, so your your clients are talking to a very trusted SSL certificate. From there, um, the traffic, you know, gets passed from the web adapters to the back end, um, and it, and you know, initially out of the box, you know. This is okay, perhaps, to have self-signed certificates because users aren't hitting those self-signed certificates directly. Um, you know, there are other things you may want to do when you go, you know, a very secure environment, and that's actually disable HTTP altogether. So in ArcGIS server, you can actually go to the endpoint. Um, after installation, it's HTTP and HTTPS is enabled. You can change that to be HTTPS only if you, if you want to. So this is all about the flow of traffic to the server via you know, properly secure channels. And also within Portal, there's a way to do this. Once you have your Portal up and running, if you go to the, the uh, organization settings, there's a way um, to also enable all HTTPS traffic to your Portal. There's a checkbox. It is unchecked by default, but you can check that box so then any communication with a portal has to be over HTTPS and it will enforce that. All right, so before we dig a little bit deeper, let's just, like I say, this is what we talked about. Certificate authorities, getting your web server up and running, a right cert, and then as you start to introduce ArcGIS server um, or ArcGIS Enterprise a little bit, you know, make sure your, your end users are talking to the web servers through properly signed certificates. So now we're gonna take this thing a little bit deeper, okay? There is a way um, to replace the self-signed certificates in ArcGIS server and portal so that for ports 6443 and 7443, it can also use a properly signed certificate, okay? so we and Craig's gonna show a quick little demo of this in a moment. Basically, through the admin endpoints, uh, or just server admin or portal admin, you can go and import a signed certificate and then tell uh, ArcGIS server or portal to now start using uh, those certificates. So here is portal. Um, the, the two screens look very similar. Um, you go to the portal admin, security, SSL certificates, and you import um, a, a PFX, for example, a PKCS12, or you can actually from this endpoint also generate a CSR, actually, 
have that signed and import it back actually through this interface if you wanted to do it that way. Okay. In ArcGIS uh, or in portal, particularly in closed environments as well, you must also import the root and intermediate certificates for your signed certificate. They aren't necessarily going to be there. So if you start using a signed certificate with portal or ArcGIS server, and you get it signed, you must also import the root and intermediates that have signed that certificate so that portal itself can, you know, actually trust its own certificate. Um, so that, you know, it's just uh, something to be aware of. Um, also, 10.5 and previous, anytime you imported a certificate into portal admin, it actually would automatically restart itself. Well, that's okay if you maybe got one but I knew customers that had to import 30 at a time and waiting portal to restart 30 times is not a lot of fun. So at 10.6, we actually introduced a little button here that you can click on to not restart um, your portal after importing a certificate that you would then be forced to do it manually yourself at some point after you're all done. So that you, you, you see that, if you go there and see that, that's a, that's a new feature at 10.6. All right, so same thing with ArcGIS Server. I've been kind of blurring the two together, not following my slides uh, very well. Um, Craig's probably sitting here yelling at me in his, in his, in his brain. But um, ArcGIS Server has an admin as well. Um, they're near identical. They look very similar. Uh, you can import a signed certificate or generate a CSR um, to do the same exact thing. Again, um, make sure you um, import the appropriate certificates. Um, and then once you import, so by default, your certificate, your ArcGIS server will look like this. You'll see a web server SSL certificate there that will say self-signed certificate. So once you import the certificate, a signed certificate, and it has a name, you'll then come back here and click on edit. And then you'll change that self-signed certificate to be the alias of the new one that you just imported. So what will happen is once you make that edit, ArcGIS server, its internal web server, will restart and actually will start using that certificate at that point. Okay. There are also tools to do this for the data store. Um, unfortunately, data store doesn't have a nice admin API like ArcGIS server and portal do. It actually has a command line tool where if you have a a certificate that you would that's been signed and you would like to import to use on 2443 there's a command line tool what's it called let me see is it on here yeah. update ssl certificate dot bad or if you're on linux it would be a dot sh file okay so we also provide the means to do this for data store as well and if you run this tool for the data store then you'll need to restart your data store to uh, for that certificate to take effect all right craig why don't you show us a little something? All right, let's do it. All right, so what Bill here, you know, what he's really been talking about is in updating those internal certificates, right? Six four four three seven four four three, specifically the ones we talk about a lot. If we need to get that fully trusted and secure communication, uh, even on the internal ports. So here's a portal that that Bill and I have uh, running in AWS for our demonstration today. Um, you know, we can see we got our nice green lock here. Uh, we're going through our web adapter, so everything is good and secure. Um, and if we take a quick look at the cert, just want to go to the cer certification path. Uh, you can see here's my server certificate, and it's signed by our Esri Enterprise root there. So that's, that's what I've signed. So what I want to do is um, I want to go to the portal uh, ad admin endpoint because I want to update the, the internal certificate. So here's portal admin. Um, again, by default, you can see I'm, I'm going through the web adapter. But a lot of times, uh, people are accessing this over 7443 because they're on the server machine um, and, and they're accessing it that way. So if we do that here, if I hit return, this is what happens in a default out of the box implementation, right? This is saying, hey, uh, you know, this is, this is a self-signed certificate. Um, it, it might not be trusted. And most of the time, you know, we might proceed right past that and we'll, we'll deal with the warning. But what I want to do right here is show you guys how we can replace this certificate on 7443 so we get a nice green lock in there, all right? 
So that is done uh, here in the uh, portal admin endpoint. If we go to security and then SSL certificates, and I showed you the path uh, there. How do I zoom in on this? Let's zoom in a little bit here. Right? I showed you the path of my server certificate here. Has the Esri Enterprise root. So the first thing I have to do is get that Esri root certificate in there. And that's done through this import root or intermediate. And I can simply browse out to that file, which I have here. I hit OK. And then I give this an alias. And I would say import. I did this just a minute ago. This is a live demo moment. Um, because what happens is the portal is going to restart once this gets into its trust store. So we're a little tight on time. So I want to make sure that um, uh, uh, we, we didn't have to worry about that. So you can see here, if I go back, I've imported the uh, Esri root certificate there. Is that me or is that you? Oh, that's you. Yeah, yeah that's your t-shirt moving all right there. <laughs> Bill. Just kidding, I think it was actually me, but it felt good to blame him. Uh, so what we want to do now is we're going to import an existing server certificate. Because of our deployment, the way we have it, that's the option we're going to use here. So we're going to say import existing server certificate. And in this case, I'm going to browse out. I've got a PFX here because this has my public and my private key in there, right? It's got, or it's got my private key. So we need that. So we're going to give this the portal dev summit for the alias. And we have to give this the password that we use. And then we're going to say import. Don't. Hold on a minute. That password there, by the way, is the password that was used to originally create the PFS. Yeah, hold on. I probably, this is what happens. I got myself prepared too early. Wait for it. <laughs> All right, that was nervous. Password. All right. Thank you. Okay, so we're close. We now have the trust chain in place because we have our root cer certificate in there for our certificate authority. And now we have, oh, that's awful. Okay, all right. So now we've, we've got our server certificate in here. But what we have to do is we have to tell Portal to use it. So I'm going to copy the alias, and I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to say update. By default, it's using that self-signed certificate. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this, and we're going to say update. And what we should find give me yours. Hello. All right, sorry about that. OK, so now what we should find is let's grab this. Let's go to an incognito window here real quick. Paste and go. Yeah, all right. Sorry, I was trying to cut it a little too close. Let's do, uh, let's clear our cache here. Browser, cl oh. Browser cache is a killer in these situations. You just. Always make sure one of the things you do is clear your browser cache when you make a change like this. <coughs> All right, here we go. There we are. So I log in. The login doesn't really matter, but what you guys can see there, right, is that we've got that nice uh, green lock. Everything's valid. And now we have secure traffic that's happening even on the internal ports to uh, Portal. It's a nearly identical process that happens for ArcGIS Server. So again, in the interest of time, we won't show that. But it's the same thing within ArcGIS Server. You go to the admin endpoint, you get your trust chain in place, and you put your server certificate, if you're using an existing server certificate. OK? Questions on that process? All right, everybody's feeling good. Here we go. All right, can you hear me? I'm using the bad mic, so let's see what happens. All right, so that was all about replacing the self-signed certificate for Portal and ArcGIS Server with a properly signed certificate. One other consideration is importing um, other certificates so that proper trust can be used to talking to external services. So if Portal has to talk out to an external service for some reason, um, like some external ArcGIS server that may be signed by some other process, 
then you got to make sure that those imp, uh, root and intermediate certificates are imported as well. So there's, there's uh, you know, the, the certificates used for serving out ports 7443 and 6443, and then there's importing certificates to make sure that uh, portal and server can communicate securely to other external um, uh, services and, and you do that via the importing the root and certificate as well. So um, I, I know it's a little bit confusing, but there's two sort of distinct um, processes to get everything set up correctly. All right, so very similar if you wanted to, um, I know Craig imported the Esri root certificate as well as his server sign just to you know get things working properly on 7443. But if I wanted to go import like Anyone familiar with Let's Encrypt these days? So Let's Encrypt is a free service now for generating SSL certificates, although they only last two months at a time, but that's okay. Um, if you want a portal to start to talk to external uh, or just servers that's using Let's Encrypt, for example, then um, I believe it's, it's not a DigiCert route, but you would have to go import that Let's Encrypt intermediate within Portal Admin to be able to properly talk to external services. So that's just something to um, be aware of. And like I said, you would come here and, and use the import root and intermediate, the same process as Craig showed earlier. And the same thing with ArcGIS Server. Um, you import it. One thing to be aware of is if, if, is if your ArcGIS Server also has that print service, then you got to make sure actually that your certificates are also imported into the operating system because there are some processes like GP services that kick off. They're actually Python code running at the operating system level. So there are times when um, you also need to import certificates into the operating system on that ArcGIS server as well. Um, so just be aware of that. All right, so additional considerations. Um, this gets pretty deep, but uh, anyone lives in a secure world, I know a lot of customers now, they're saying, hey, turn off anything but TLS version 1.2. So we actually support the ability to come into port on ArcGIS server to only implement version 1.2 if you were required to do that. Um, if you're really down the weeds with encryption and understand cipher suites, you can also come in here and adjust the cipher suites um, that has been used for actually doing the encryption uh, for uh, SSL. Okay. Um, we're we going to show something here. Yeah, we're we skipping do, this one. No, we're going to do a quick demo here. Okay. So uh, this is talking about establishing trust to those external ArcGIS servers. So Bill uh, mentioned using uh, Let's Encrypt right as a certificate authority. So I actually have an ArcGIS server endpoint here uh, that I want to work with, and as a matter of fact, it just so happens to be signed uh, via Let's Encrypt. So in this case, we have a root certificate authority as well as an intermediate certificate authority. So if I want to establish trust with this ArcGIS server, I have to bring in both the root and the intermediate certificate. Okay? So the process is much the same as before. I'm going to come back to my portal admin endpoint, go to security, and then SSL certificates. And just like I brought in the Esri root to establish trust with it, I'm going to do the same thing here for uh, using the Let's Encrypt um, CA. So I'm going to bring in the root CA, and I'm just going to control C there. And in this case, I'm going to check the box to do not restart portal right away, so I can import that. Like Bill said, that might not seem like much, but we work with some customers that have like 20, 30 certificate authorities and intermediates, and that is painful to have to wrestle with that reboot. So the next piece then is we're going to get the intermediate authority. And we will bring that in. And now I'm going to put this in here. And in this time, I am going to leave that option unchecked because I do want my portal to restart, uh, which it will do here in a moment. And then as soon as that restart is done, we will be able to have <coughs> trust with that external RGS <coughs> server. So in that case, we don't deal anything with the, the server certificates, just the trust chain. So it's all about that trust chain and getting that in place. All right. OK. All right, we got about 10 minutes to go here. We're going to talk about some common problems. We might go over just a few minutes. We'll try to wrap up, but this is a really good part. We're going to show you, we're going to, we have some things staged to hopefully break and then show you how to fix it. Oh, wait, actually, the first couple slides are mine, aren't they? Yep, you're All up. Right. All right.
All right, go. Or is Next. it me? Let's oh, do go it. Ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Let's do it from right here. So this is what we talked about. Common problems that we're starting to see a lot of. You know, um, we talked about the sand and you know, having a missing sand. So make sure as you present your CSRs to your CAs, you include that. Hit me one more next. Okay, and that's just that, that little option down there under the attributes. Um, we'll present these slides so you can see that format, but if you just Google, you know, sand and how to, how to uh, present that, uh, in a, in a, when you're presenting your CSR, you'll be all set and that'll eliminate that warning that you get from Chrome and probably other browsers, browsers in the future. So that's a common problem that we're seeing a lot of. <coughs> now next here is we sort of move into the ArcGIS um, realm. You know, how do you, how do you know you sort of you have an SSL problem? Sometimes it's a little tricky. It doesn't present itself very you know, well and, and very apparently. So how do we know? Well, one of the best ways to start figuring this out is get into your portal logs. So that portal admin, if you haven't spent much time in there, make that your friend. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff. So when you get into the portal logs, what you'll see here, what we've highlighted, are a couple of snippets that um, you know, present that tell us, hey, this is an SSL-related problem here, right? This Java security cert, cert exception, right? We've got some kind of SSL problem in there. You know, the PKIX you know, path building failed there. Again, those should be triggers in your mind that you've got some sort of trust problem uh, of, of one kind or another. And then you can start looking at your trust chains and the work you're doing and hopefully be able to, to pull that apart and, and identify it. All right, you ready to try this? Yeah, here we go. All right, here we go. So we're going to do a live demo and try to fix it. It's going to get real here. All right, so I am, uh, I am one of you. I'm an analyst like, all right, cool. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to go to, uh, what, what is it, portal dev? How do I not have that queued up? Do. Portal dev, something that is you Hold on, dude. I got to get the URL right first. All right. I'm going to um, sign in with my uh, very unique password and everything. All right. So, cool. Um, I'm a user. I'm a, you know, expert portal analyst. You know, it's, hey, I have a map. Someone sent me a URL. Let me see. Did I put this somewhere? Oh, no. Dude, I put it in the other slides. Y'all hold on for a minute. Um, I, I'm, uh, we updated these slides, and I know my URL is in this one. All right, someone out there sent me this URL saying, hey, here's a feature service that I want you, uh, here it is for you to use and check it out. It's like, all right, cool. So I'm going to come here, and I'm going to add layer from web, and I'm going to add this feature service. And in this particular case, this is just uh, something dummy that was put out there that... Uh, um, one of our, um, actually it's a, you know, DHS did for us, it's just a dummy service, this doesn't really represent anything real. And it's like, alright, cool, I can see the points, I can click on them, everything's good. So everything must be working, right? Who thinks everything's working right? He does. That's okay. True. We got three, there was three. Alright, now why is this, why am I able to draw this? Well, my, when I access that feature service, Portal isn't talking directly to it, the back-end server. Me, my web browser is talking directly to it. And um, I have all the proper certificate chain in place. So if we were to quickly look at this guy, um, the feature service, and go here, um, this may look, you know, it's got a, a U.S. government thing, a U.S. Treasury, a DHS. So that's a very uncommon public trust chain, okay? That's something for the government. It's like I have all of those in my browser at the moment, so I can load it because at this point it's just a, my browser talking directly to it. All right, that's cool. Now, who in here has done analysis on a feature service, right? Anyone done that? Right, it's a pretty straightforward thing. So I'm gonna come over here to my browser and I'm gonna just say, hey, I wanna buffer this feature service because I know I should be able to do that. It's like, cool, the buffer tool opens, I'm gonna come here and say 100 meters, um, blah, 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 yeah, give it some name, I don't know, test four. Okay, I need to, I need to select a layer. Hmm. I can't load this layer, Craig. Bill? Why is that? All right, so here's what I'm going to do. Craig's the portal administrator, so I'm going to send him a really nasty email about his portal being all jacked up. Craig, do you know how we could perhaps resolve this issue so I can actually get my job done? As a matter of fact, I, I sure do here. <laughs> all right, so what we've got is we actually have a, we've got a trust problem. You need to, right? if you want yep, to switch your we're going to switch. And I've been cheating here because we're coming down, uh, we're under the gun at the moment. 
So we've got a trust chain problem, right? So as Bill said, we had, uh, I just want to show you guys that trust chain again, right? That, ah, forget it. We got a trust chain problem. And what we want <laughs> is we had, we, I, what I wanted to show you was the chain, right? So we have three certificates, a root and two intermediates. So we got to get all those certificates in our portal. We don't well, how do you know this is an SSL problem, Well, right? we know this. Now you're really pushing it because we're up against the gun <laughs> here. All right, here we go. This is, what, this is how Bill and I interact. So I know this, Bill, because I'm going to come and I'm going to inspect my logs. So I'm coming to my portal admin and my logs. We're going to do a query for some warnings. And then there it is, right? We've got an SSL-related one, the PKIX building failed. So I know. I got a trust chain problem. That's what's going on here. So what I was doing there uh, behind the scenes as Bill was showing that is I got the first two certificates in the chain imported and we're going to go ahead and get our last one in here. And I'll leave that option to not, uh, or that say, hey, we need to restart portal here. And so now I have the root, I have the intermediate, the first intermediate, then the second intermediate. So now once portal restarts, Bill should be able to do that analysis. So this is always the moment of truth as we wait for Portal to restart. I'm coming over to you, Bill. He's going to clear his All cache. Right, I'm clearing my cache. Craig, as Portal admin, has sent me a nasty email back saying, fine, fixed it. Try again, right? That's exactly what I did. All right, so I cleared my cache. I'm going to start me a brand new browser. So I'm going to go back to Portal again. All right, it's restarting. Oh, it's restarting. It's restarting. Don't worry. It's restarting. All right. Anytime you get that message right there, you're a little bit nervous. You're like, oh, what's happening? What's happening? This is when the portal adds. Stay, stay, stay with it. Relax. Portal. Uh, unfortunately, portal is not an instantaneous restart, as many of you uh, probably know at this point. Dude, this better come back up. <laughs> I'll send you another nasty email. It does, it does take a few, a few seconds for uh, things to come back up. In the meantime, does anybody have any questions for us? <laughs> Come yes, on. sir. What's that? An earlier point you made concerning Chrome browser really needs for a certificate to have a SAN. Yes, sir. If you don't, even if it's the the, the SAN has the exact same name as what the common name is, Chrome in the past. Year will will throw out an error message as yeah the the later the later versions of Chrome. Craig, what's going on? All right, I see a little action. All right, I, I was nervous. actually getting really nervous there. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna sign back in real quick. We have one more good demo too, so stay with us. Portal. I knew it all along. It was going to work. Stick with this. I know everyone's got somewhere to be. Um, yeah, yes, question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if, if you would see, yeah, I mean, um, there are times when ArcGIS server may need to do the same thing, and you would see similar error messages in ArcGIS server logs. All right, so I'm going to go to the map real quick. Let's load this up so we can move on. I'm going to load my same layer map back. Um, load it up. It should still draw the same. That's great. And now if I come over here to analysis, um, sometimes it takes this little drop up of a few seconds to pop open for some reason. Create me some buffers. Boom. So now that's available. I know this works. I'm not going to run it because I want to you know, have a couple minutes for the next demo. So that's one case of where SSL issue that you have to do something. All right. All right, we're against our gun. La we got last one minute. Last little thing here. We might have to extend it to two. All right, so I have um, a uh, server I have set up. All right, let me see it. I got all this right. As you can see, it has a properly signed certificate. This is ArcGIS Portal, ArcGIS Server, or I, I guess I should say ArcGIS Enterprise. I've installed them, configured the web adapter, it just so happens that Tech TX SSL is a DNS alias. It is not the actual server name. Okay, so it's like great. All right, that's fine. Um, everything's working. I'm able to sign in, et cetera, et cetera. 
I got a good uh, certificate at the web server. So as far as I'm concerned, life is good, right? All right, um, do some super secret stuff here. All right, one thing I haven't done is like, I need to federate this now, right? Uh, I haven't done that yet. I got everything hooked up. Um, I've installed the data store, registered with ArcGIS server. I'm gonna do a quick federation, right? Everyone have confidence in me doing a federation? I see the money on the table. All right, I'm gonna add a server. And you know what, I'm gonna use the DNS alias because that's why I created it, that's what I used it for. I don't wanna like people, um, I don't wanna be using this bizarre uh, uh, cryptic actual server name for any reason. So I'm gonna give it um, uh, you think I could type that in right? All right, so I'm doing federation, right? So a lot of things going on behind the scenes, but basically Portal and ArcGIS server are exchanging information. Portal saying, hey server, you're now federated with me, so anytime someone comes to you, make sure you come to me and log in and all that good stuff. Everyone think this is gonna work? No, I got a lot of head shaking going on. It worked, boom. All right, I can come over here and specify my hosting server. That's good stuff, I'm loving. Craig, how you feeling? Feeling good, we're running late. We got I know, we're running late, but this is good stuff. This is, uh, should have had a little better time management. I blame that on you. <laughs> All right, this does take a few seconds, I apologize. So just to make sure all the federation pieces are working, I'm gonna publish a real quick hosted feature service from a simple little shapefile. Make sure everything's talking correctly. Whew. Things are running slow right now. Actually better on the Wi-Fi. All right, so things came back. So I'm actually just gonna to go to my content real quick and I am going to come in here um, so I can add a new item. This, of course, is 10.6 if you haven't seen some of this. And I always have a trusty little uh, um, thing I have down here. I don't think I have that published anywhere already. Uh, some watersheds where I used to work in TVA. Um, all right, let's give it a different name. All right, and I'm going to run this. So it's going to start to publish. Oh. All right, that's no bueno right there. All right, so that's, that's really a bad looking thing right there, right? So what is going on? Well, if we just real quick jump to portal admin, so let's look at their logs, all right? So if we go to query real quick, and all of a sudden I see some of my typical SSL stuff in here, certificate exception, and really that error message is trying to say this, but because of some, just some syntax problems, all that information's not coming through. This is a situation where I, because of that admin URL I used in Federation, I'm trying to talk to 6443 over the DNS name. However, in my ArcGIS server, go to server admin real quick, Go to machines, this guy, go to SSL certificates, knowing it's still using the self sign. It's actually the certificate being used there, that's the name. So the name, the URL, I'm trying to talk over the DNS. The name on the certificate is not matching and therefore it is kicking that out, okay? So unfortunately, federation occurred. You think like as a portal admin, hey, everything's set up, I'm out. But at the, um, unfortunately, it's not until a publication scenario that something like this occurs. So how I would simply fix that, I know we're out of time, is I would just come back. I've already, I have another certificate here that I've created. It actually can be self-signed in this case, but I've actually put the DNS name on it, okay? So I actually could come back here, um, come back and say update to my SSL certificates. Um, come on. Come down here, like we showed earlier, instead of self-sign, I wanna use that and, and redo it. And at this point, I don't actually have to bounce portal or even ArcGIS server, it's gonna do it automatically. I don't even have to unfederate and refederate at this point. So just real quick, um, if I cancel this and I actually, let me think, is this gonna work? If I tried this one more time, uh, I'll try Watersheds one more time. Uh, we'll try Watersheds three, 
blah, blah, blah. Was I supposed to do one other step for this? Um, I think I should have bounced something, connection. I might be in a kind of a funk state right now. I may need to like refresh the whole thing. But doing that, so now that the admin URL of Federation is talking to ArcGIS serve on 6443 and those alias names match, okay? So that's how that you would fix this particular problem. All right, I know we're way out of time. The key takeaways that we wanted to go over today, I'm not sure of these. But you know, SSL is all about secure, encrypted, trusted communication. It starts at the web tier, it pushes all the way through down to some of the most underlying components of ArcGIS Enterprise. Please take the survey. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we'll answer some questions now.